All right, my friends, welcome back to Frog Boy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew, and today I wanted to talk about AMD's next gen GPUs because there has been an interesting development on the high end subject when it comes to AMD's 8000 series GPUs. So, um, I guess Tom's Hardware um, did a interview with a guy named Jack Hun Huna Huna. I guess he is the guy that pretty much is in charge of like GPUs and and stuff like that. Like he's the uh, he, he's the guy that would know what the freak is going on. And so they start talking and I'm going to kind of summarize this a little bit just because it's kind of getting late and I got to get to bed. Um, so he's talking about like this plan. Um, because because Tom's hardware is asking him, hey, are you guys going to, there's a lot of rumors talking about you guys not doing a high-end GPU to compete with NVIDIA's high-end GPUs. And the uh, the conversation pretty much goes into, uh, it, it pretty much goes into him saying that like, okay, so I'm just going to read what he said in he, okay, so this is the, this is the statement that he makes. I'm looking at scale. And AMD is in a different place right now. Uh, we have this debate quite a bit at AMD, right? So the question I asked is, is the PlayStation 5, do you think that's hurting us? So uh, pretty much, here's here's the thing. I'm going to I'm gonna kind of go on my little thing on that. You can get a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X for about 500 bucks. They play all these next-gen games. Um, if you stick them on a 1440p monitor, they actually do pretty well. Just just recently, I made a video um, talking about like the uh, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. If you have these on a 1440p monitor, and you say you put like a 7800 XT or you put a 4070 or something like that, and you run all of these on a 1440p monitor, um, the only major real difference you get is the overall freaking frame rate. Um, visual quality looks pretty dang similar to the point where it's it's almost indistinguishable um, in a lot of cases. I mean, there are some way bad situations, you know, where games just come out and they just look completely hit on either of those consoles, where on the PC they look absolutely freaking phenomenal. So there are those outliers, but all the all the important stuff, your Fortnite, your Call of Duty, your 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 games that sell millions of copies, those games look just fine on Series X and PlayStation 5. And, and if you were on a 1440p monitor, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So I understand uh, Jack. I'm just going to call him Jack H. I understand Jack H's questioning right there is, is PlayStation 5 hurting us? And to be completely honest with you, the PlayStation 5 is in an interesting position where it does have a fast SSD. Um, when PlayStation or other really high quality developers put out a game, they, they put out some really good looking games that, that look very, very good on that console. Like it's like, Ooh boy. And PlayStation is launching. Had they haven't not launched a game at 60 frames per second yet, which is more than fine. Like myself, I aim for, you know, 4k 60 frames a second and then down sample that. So I get where he's coming from. The PlayStation 5 is kind of a thorn in your side when you are trying to sell somebody a $1,500 PC. You can get the PlayStation 5 or the Series X for $500. Now, PlayStation 5 Pro is absolutely going to drive even a bigger wedge if that thing as is reasonably priced. If they're $699 for that, that is a reasonable enough price to where with upscalers and all of that stuff, you might not be able to tell a difference between like say a, a mid-range PC and a PlayStation 5 Pro. It might be that good. Now frame rate, obviously you'll, you'll always be able to tell that. Um, the PlayStation 5 Pro is definitely going to be an interesting um, kerfuffle for AMD. And, I'm, and, I, and I do understand that. Now, me personally, I love AMD. I, I, would pr I prefer AMD GPUs over NVIDIA any day of the week. I just do. 
but this guy's got a point the playstation 5 and the playstation 5 pro even xbox series x for that matter you got a you you got a lot of like do i need to upgrade or is this good enough to get me by you know what i mean like i could turn on my xbox or my playstation 5 and play them games and be just perfectly fine it's not until you actually have and see what pc can do to where you're like oh yeah i don't need those as much as i used to actually i can live without those now because pc is so good so let's come on down here a little bit and he says his priority right now is to build scale he wants to get to 40 to 50 percent if he can get to 40 to 50 percent then he can get more developers on board to actually optimize better for amd uh, because right now at, at, at what 10 percent of the uh right now at whatever they are like 15 15 something percent 18 percent of the market share or whatever it, it is definitely harder to get developers to optimize for your platform and that's the same thing you're seeing with xbox series x versus playstation 5 right now you're seeing developers more apt to develop for ps5 and then just port to xbox therefore you're getting the same performance you're getting the same resolution targets you're getting basically the same game and they are not utilizing what's on tap on the xbox series x and that's pretty much what's going on in the pc space amd doesn't have a big enough freaking foothold so you're seeing nvidia be the prominent um, platform that people develop for and you know amd might not always get you know i mean like dude we we, we literally just got every game that's recently just come out they all got the newest nvidia dlss 3.5 and all that stuff and they they're, they're still rocking amd's fsr2 fsr2 so yeah that, that like what he's saying is definitely making a lot of sense so when he asked him are you bringing out a high-end card he's like look man uh to get us to 40 to 50 percent of the market faster do i want to go after the 10 percent which is you know 10 percent of the market is is out there trying to buy high-end cards you know like the 4090s or the 4080s or the 7900 xt or the xtx um th that's 10 percent of the market it's very small it's it's not very huge the biggest part of the market is literally like 30 60 cards like 60 series cards and and like yeah that's that's what's buying them so he's like okay so or do i go after 80 percent of the market because i'm an 80 percent kind of guy and then he says um i i don't want amd to be a company that only people who can afford porsches and ferraris can buy i want to build gaming systems for millions of users so therefore like taking that whole thing into consideration that makes me think that like he wants to pack in as much power as possible so that there's like so that you can't dispute that like you're getting a very good bang for your buck at a price range that is affordable for everyone so i and with that type of a mindset i could expect i mean i think you should expect to see like amd's top end card if they do not cater to the uh to the enthusiast side you should expect 4080 in between 4080 4090 power out of their out of their card for a reasonable price or or maybe less or maybe less I, I i don't know i mean they've already got a 7900 xt they got an xtx i mean they would have I, I don't know at least beat those cards at 500 bucks maybe that would be i mean that would definitely be like oh boy people would be like yeah i want to touch that um and then he goes down a little bit further he says i don't do it about the whole king of the hill thing whatever you know fighting that but when tom pushes him a little bit more he says he says um he says uh he says on the pc side we've had uh we've had a better product oh no that's not it that's not it he said okay this is what he says but don't worry i love gaming when i present to the board i say gaming is a strategic pillar in my strategy i actually talk about a few things commercial pc and gaming don't worry quote don't worry we will have a great strategy for the enthusiasts on pc side but we just haven't disclosed it yet 
we'll be using chiplets, which doesn't impact what we want to do on scale. So that's pretty much what I'm going to read out of that. I mean, if you guys want to look at, just look up Tom's hardware and stuff, um, I would put a link, but by the time I get this video out, I, I, I will probably be in bed. So I want to, I want to go on about that. So he says, all right, we will have a solution for enthusiasts, but it will be a chiplet design, obviously like the 7900 XTX, the 7900 XT. So, and they haven't disclosed it yet. So there's people out there leaking that they're only going to do like maybe like an 8800 XT or something. But from what I'm gathering is I've, I, I kind of feel like this is what's going to happen. I feel like I feel like the 8800 XT is going to come out and it's going to be like that $500 card. And I feel like the 8900 XTX or XT isn't going to come out until a little bit later normally they start with like the high-end card and then they work themselves down i feel like they are going to mass produce a very affordable very powerful efficient gpu bringing with it some ai upscaling um, all of the other stuff that they keep getting kicked for they'll bring this to market at, at an affordable price to try to saturate and take business away from the NVIDIA cards because the NVIDIA GPUs, like the 5070, the 5060, all of those, they're, they're at least a year away. At least a year away. Uh, NVIDIA will come out with their 4090, their 4080. I really do think that AMD is going to try to position themselves in a position to where they can pump out a very powerful, very efficient card maybe even utilizing pssr technology in the freaking in the uh in the in, uh, in in these new freaking gpus to try to win back some of that market share or to try to gain some of that market share in the affordable uh pc space now that to me sounds like a very good idea but at the same time i mean man people will literally wait for an nvidia gpu NVIDIA has a strong market, like mind share. They, they do. I mean, every now and then you find a kooky person like me that just like, that, that likes AMD. That's like, yeah, man. It's like we're all, I feel like a chum, a chummy bro for AMD. But I love it. I, I think it's incredible. I love what I can do with AMD. I like the way it works. I like the, I like the, the feel of it. I like the, the setting. I, I like what AMD provides for me as, as a gamer. I like it. But I also like NVIDIA too. Don't get me wrong. Like NVIDIA is the is is like the best when it comes to a lot of the stuff. But I feel like AMD, at least at least this generation, every 7000 series card that I've tested has been absolutely incredible. And even outperformed the NVIDIA GPUs a, a lot of the time. And I'm like, wow, on the games that I play, on the games that I play. Now there's games that favor NVIDIA. There's games that favor AMD. And the games that like it's it's kind of crazy the games that i like to play usually favor amd so i'm like yeah i'm good with that like i was playing star wars outlaws and i'm using all the features you know all the nvidia features and stuff too and and i'm getting a 40 fps experience and 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 it's playable like it feels okay you turn on frame generation you turn on like some amd's fluid motion frames on top of that and you get like you know 80 90 frames a second and <clears throat> and you're playing it and it feels super smooth and with with a controller you're not feeling the latency or anything so it's like you can utilize this stuff and and I, and I just think to myself I'm like gosh dang I like what what AMD does and I'm looking forward to this next card if they don't bring I mean if they bring a high end card I'm absolutely going to buy it absolutely if they bring a a $500, you know, let's saturate the market card. I'm going to buy it. Like you're going to see firsthand how it runs right here at Frog Boy X1 Gaming because I like AMD. And I have I have I like AMD. I like what they do. I like their cards. I feel very very comfortable um using utilizing the uh the feature set and everything from AMD. So it's it's easy for me. I I like it. I mean, I like NVIDIA too, but let's face it, man. It's just, 
to me, NVIDIA is just like, oh, it's too overhyped and, and like nobody really cares about it. I mean, like, look at all these dudes that go out and buy 4090s and start making content and they get like 300 views and, and, and it's like, it, it, it's like, dude, you guys are just throwing your money away. I mean, if you're trying to build a channel on NVIDIA, there's already, there's already so many known NVIDIA channels out there that just nobody cares. And it just so happened to be that like, I love AMD. So it's easy for me to create AMD content, but still my channel's not grown because I'm too fanboy about it. So, <laughs> but this is awesome. That's good news. We do have some hope that, that there's gonna be a high-end GPU um, this generation for AMD, but we just don't know. We just don't know. He didn't outright deny it. He didn't confirm it. So, I mean, I guess you could kind of say he confirmed it if he's talking about like, look, we'll have something for the enthusiasts because that's who we are, the enthusiasts, the people that want the high-end stuff. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out. Hopefully they announce something soon and then we can put all of this to rest. So, all right, my friends, thank you for watching Frogboy X1 Gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Well, have a good night.